Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another plenty video. I have quite the video in store for you today. I've actually never done anything like this, but I am going to be documenting an entire week of plant care or plant chores. Just anything that I do with my plants, I will be filming it. I wanted to do a video just giving an idea of what my typical week looks like caring for 200 houseplants. My plan is just to pick up the camera whenever I'm doing anything, watering, fertilizing, repotting. We shall see what I get up to. I often get asked how I manage such a large collection or how much time I spend watering per week. And the answer is simply that I do not know. So I'm very curious of how this video is gonna turn out and perhaps it will provide me with some insight as well. I've actually just started a new plant care schedule that I'm kind of trying to ease myself into. Um, I just, you know, I'm trying to get better with my time management, trying to get better with my time blocking. It's just necessary for everything that I have going on and for managing this massive plant collection. <laughs> To help me learn more about how to plan and use my time effectively, I've been using Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning platform and they are kindly sponsoring today's video. My biggest hindrance when it comes to time management is definitely planning ahead and trying to come up with a schedule that works for me. So I'm always looking for tips and inspiration on how to improve on that. I recently took a class called Productivity Habits That Stick by Mike Vardy, and it's really given me a lot of insight on how to make time blocking work for me. He speaks about the importance of theming your days, and that really resonated with me because I struggle a lot with shifting gears between different tasks, and I also don't have a consistent schedule, which I think is one of my problems. <laughs> But he spoke on how to remedy that and how to organize my life in a way where it's going to run more smoothly and allow me to have more time for myself. I'm excited to continue to use Skillshare for more productivity and time management skills, but I'm also looking forward to using Skillshare to learn creative hobbies that I've been putting off, like crochet. I've been wanting to learn to crochet forever, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So hopefully with my new productivity knowledge, this will all come full circle and I will in turn have more time for myself for me to focus on learning the cozy hobbies that I've been putting off. So stay tuned for my crochet era. Skillshare offers classes on such a wide variety of topics. I truly, truly believe everyone can benefit from hopping on and checking it out. From things like illustration, photography, creative writing, to gardening, social media, marketing, the list just goes on and on. There's so many different options. I absolutely love learning and creating, and I feel like as we move into the cozy season, it's just the perfect time to do so. If you would like to join me, I have great news for you. Skillshare is offering the first 500 people who click the link down below in my description box one of their best offers yet. 30 days free and 40% off of your first year of Skillshare membership. Thank you so much to Skillshare for partnering with me on this video. All right, let's see what this week has in store for us. Happy Wednesday, happy watering day. That's primarily what I'm gonna be doing with my plants today is watering um, and I have a lot of it to do. I'm gonna be doing this whole big plant shelf. I know I need to water the plants on top of the calyx here and some of my smaller plants in the office. I'm actually just about to pour myself a coffee as well because I get up early, you guys. I get up at 5 a.m. So by the time it's like noon or one, I feel like I'm starting like a whole new day. It's Wednesday, part two. So sometimes, you know, I just feel like I need a little coffee and today is one of those days because we got, we got stuff to do still. This little plant watering moment is kind of like a break for me because I worked all morning, like pretty much since 5.30 a.m. until for most of the morning I was editing, I uploaded a video, um, did some other stuff on my computer. And now I'm going to be watering, which is a really nice break. And then I have more um, just editing and planning and work-related things in the afternoon and probably the evening. So we'll see how much watering I can get done. And there is more plant stuff I would like to do today, but I'll just see how I'm doing time-wise. It's a busy time when it comes to plant care because I have pest issues that I'm trying to combat. I have plants that need to come inside. I have cactus that I want to figure out how I'm gonna be overwintering them. 
Um, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot going on. And it's still warm in here. It's been warm and sunny the past few days and it's not as sunny as it was yesterday, but yeah, it's still 26 degrees inside my house. So um, the plants have still been drying out lately. I was getting a bit of a break because it was raining, but now we're back to heat. Um, anyways, I'm not gonna talk your ear off, but uh, yeah, hi, hello. Welcome to day one of this video. I am going to be jumping into some watering. Okay, so I've discovered a problem with my Hoya macrophylla or latifolia snow queen. It is, the leaves are like rotting off for some reason. I don't know why, it was fine and now it looks like this and the rest of the leaves are pretty soft. Some of them feel okay, but some of them feel pretty soft and I am mildly concerned. Just gonna look at this. Hmm. Very interesting since I am definitely not an overwaterer, so, and this is in terracotta, so I doubt that that would be the reason why this is going on, but I'm going to be doing an emergency chop so that I can have some insurance cuttings on this plant because I have no idea what's going on with this or what's gonna happen. Okay, got my shears. Yeah, that is so weird. Just out of the blue. I haven't even had this plant for very long. Like, I don't know, probably six months or something. So I would be bummed if something happened to it. I'm just gonna start chopping, I guess. Okay, I guess I'll keep some leaves on the base of the plant here. So it's just gonna look like this now. Mostly just cause I'm curious to see what this is gonna do. Like, is it gonna survive? Is it gonna go downhill? I have no idea. Um, like I said, these are kind of soft. This, well, yeah, they are kind of soft. Oh, the bottom is still kind of moist though. Should I check the roots? The roots are probably rotted. I'm just gonna leave it. I mean, there's not really much I can do, even if the roots aren't great anyways. Like, I've done all that I can really do, which is take some insurance cuttings, which I'm gonna cut that even further so that it's a few separate cuttings. I'll probably do this pair. This pair. And then this one, and then that one, I guess. This is like a new leaf that isn't even fully formed, but we'll see what happens, I guess. I feel like when my Hoya go downhill, they just like, without any warning, they just like whoosh, sail straight down <laughs> because this is not the first time this has happened to me. Like luckily, I feel like 95% of the time, my Hoya are super easy and doing really well. But then 5% of the time, just out of nowhere, they completely can tank. So yeah, okay. Maybe I'll put these in perlite. I'm gonna do some of this nice large perlite. And 
I'm literally just going to stick them in here. And then I'll go in with my Super Thrive water and fill it up. Okay, emergency propagation complete. Now we can all cross our little fingers for these. I'm gonna put them back on the shelf under grow light and hope that they root. Okay, I finished watering this whole shelf, which feels great. So now I'm gonna be moving on to the calyx shelf. There's not too many plants on here. Two, four, six. There's only seven or eight of them. So, oh, and maybe I'll have to do that a couple down there. Um, but it's not gonna be a big procedure. I can do this in like 10 minutes.
Okay, I think I'm pretty much done with my watering for now. I might do a little bit more watering tonight because I was looking at some plants in my Mills Botol and it looks pretty dry in there. And I think that's because I changed the fans to running 24 seven again. During the summer, I had them only running during the day because that cabinet was just drying out so fast um, with how hot it gets. And I think because it's been warm lately and I have the fans going, it's just, it's drying out again. <laughs> so I might have to do that later tonight. Um, and I also might do some, um, work with the plants outside tonight, bringing some of them in and showering them off. Um, but for now, I am going to take a break from plant chores and um, do some other work and then cook dinner. So if I end up doing any plant things tonight, then I'll hop back on here. Oh yeah, and I wanted to say that it took me a couple of hours to water this afternoon but it definitely takes longer when I'm filming because I'm moving the camera around and stuff and talking to you guys sometimes. But um, it also just takes me longer to water than maybe some other people because I bring every single plant to the sink. That's just how I prefer to water. I find that the easiest way to avoid like water getting all over furniture and floors and stuff. So that's how I do it. And I also just like to flush plants all the way through with the water. So I bring all of my plants to the sink. So other people could probably water that amount of plants in like 20 minutes, but for me, two hours. Oh yeah, and I didn't show you, but I actually ended up cutting up all of my Monstera. What are these even called again? I don't know why this name always escapes me for some reason. I, I wanna say Standoliana and then I wanna say Silta Picana, but it's neither of those. Anyways, this lovely Monstera, whose name will be on the screen, um, was just growing so wild and out of control and I just didn't pot it up soon. I wanted to pot them all together and put them on a pole, but then they just, they just got too unruly. So I've chopped again and hopefully this time I will pot them up in time to get them on a pole and get them growing nicely. But yeah, I have a ton of cuttings of these again. This plant and I have a bit of a love-hate relationship. It's just, um... Yeah, well, it's not really. It's mostly just me being lazy and not getting it potted together and on a pole. <laughs> so it's really my goal to do that this time. So hopefully in a few weeks, I will be potting these bad boys up. I feel like almost every single time I water, I find random tasks like that that need to be done. So that's also another reason why it can take me some extra time. I do sometimes do an emergency water, which is just me going around with my squirt bottle and topping everybody up. Obviously that's when I'm in a rush or something, but yeah, I like to just, you know, take my time and be able to do it the way that I want to do it when I'm able to. Good morning everybody happy thursday so as you saw last night i stayed up and i got some more watering done i watered my cabinet because i just really didn't want to have to worry about it today i'm really trying to get on a schedule where i'm doing all of my watering just on a couple of days throughout the week like i said um so we got that done which feels really good that i don't have to worry about that today so the only thing I'm gonna do this morning is just go around and top up my moss poles. So I have these ones behind me here, which is where I'm gonna start. 
And then since I did water um, a lot of my plants yesterday, I don't have to worry about the moss poles on the Vitzjo shelf, the Millsbo tall, or on the calyx. We've got a lot of Ikea going on in here. Um, so I don't have to worry about those ones, which is nice. Um, so I just have this shelf behind me and then um, some of the living room plants. Anyways, long story short, I'm just gonna be going in with my Super Thrive water and topping up all of the moss poles. And then I'm just gonna be working today. And then um, once I'm done working this evening, I do plan on dealing with the plants outside. So um, that's probably the next time you will see me. Also, when I go around and do my poll checks every, <clears throat> usually every second day, I like to fill up any propagations that need it. So I'm just topping up this Hoya Wilbur Graves water prop because I can see it's getting just a little bit low. This is Hoya Obovada. running out of water here i've got to go refuel i also use plain water to top up any of my carnivorous plants while i'm going around and doing my moss and prop um topping up so look at how cute this is it's blooming again look at that cutie little flower anyways yeah i just um top these up this one too i fill up the little tray I realized that I forgot to water the plants in the office yesterday because, I don't know, I always forget about these. Like, my poor neglected viricosum. I need to, I need to do something about this because I don't want to neglect this plant. Like, I love it, but it just gets neglected in there. Um, anyways, I'm watering it right now, watering the pole, and randomly deciding to chop off, like, five leaves. These droopy ones at the bottom, I just feel like they need to go. <laughs> like... They're literally just drooping down. They look pretty rough, so I'm just going to chop them all off. I'm tired of looking at them, to be honest. Three, four, five. I'll probably end up propagating this plant at some point because it's just, um, yeah, it's unruly. I mean, it's not that unruly. But now it's bald at the bottom. Maybe I'll do a chop and extend or something later on. I'll probably extend, grow it a little bit more, and then do a chop and extend with the new, hopefully nice growth on the new pole. Anyways, saying goodbye to a bunch of leaves. I think they were just past their prime anyways, so yeah. Anyways, just gonna quickly water the plants in the office and then I'm done for this morning when it comes to plant care. I forgot to turn on the camera, but I just repotted. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. <laughs> I love it so much. I just repotted my Zendapsis Silver Cloud. This was a major, major upgrade. It came from two small pots, literally these two small little square plastic pots. And now it is in this beautiful terracotta pot in the Molly's Aeroid Mix. I actually just used up the last of my Molly's Aeroid Mix. So I really need to order some more. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to watch this grow even more. It was getting so, so thirsty in that tiny pot. I feel so bad. Um, but now it's completely upgraded and yeah, I'm just really excited to watch this plant get more full and long. Like I'm finally, wait, it's kind of backwards. 
hopefully it will adjust itself so that it's facing forwards but yeah i'm just excited to have finally done that i've been putting that off for so long um but now it's repotted so yay also i just finished filming a video and now i think i'm gonna clean up and then make some dinner and then um maybe i should do my plant things first actually because the sun is gonna go down Okay, I cleaned the dining room area. I cleared the table off, but I didn't clean the kitchen and I decided that I'm not making dinner tonight. It's just gonna be a scavenging night, which means I can move on to the plant stuff that I wanna get done this evening, which is bringing all the plants in. They all need to come in, every single one. That's it. No more putting it off because it is getting really chilly out. All of the non- cactus and succulents are going into the shower. I'm gonna be spraying them all off. And then the cactus, I'm actually thinking of overwintering um, my like true desert cactus. What, Ollie Bear, come here, come here. It's not time yet, baby. You gotta wait a little bit longer. I'm thinking of overwintering my monkey tail, my rat tail, and my opuntia um, down in the basement which is a very new thing for me to be trying. I've never like overwintered cactus, uh, giving them like a rest period, but I watched a bunch of videos and apparently that's the best thing to do. It promotes blooms. It um, keeps the growth like nice looking. You don't, you're not gonna get that spindly winter growth. So basically I'm not gonna be watering them at all um, from now until like March probably. Um, and the reason I'm putting them down in the basement is because you're supposed to put them somewhere with low humidity and um, low temperatures. And although the basement is heated, it's definitely cooler than upstairs. Um, and there's a dehumidifier down there. So it's only like 35% humidity or something like that, which is half the humidity of upstairs. So I just feel like it's gonna be the best spot to overwinter them. There is a small window that I'm thinking of putting them in front of so they can maybe just like get a little bit of light. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm just curious of how it's gonna go because like I said, I've watched a bunch of videos of other people that do this, but I've never done it myself. I've always just kept my cactus like growing on my windowsill or whatever during winter, but I'm really learning how detrimental that is to their growth. And yeah, I guess it's really important for them to have a rest period. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I guess I'm just gonna start hauling them in. Okay, first batch is all watered and showered off. I'm just gonna let them drip dry for a bit and then I'm gonna move them onto a towel so that I can put the next batch in there. Also, random side note, but I got the fuzzy lined Crocs to be like my indoor shoes for over the winter and it's literally the best decision I've ever made. I'm obsessed with them and they're so perfect for when I'm puttering around doing my plant chores and everything. I love them. Okay, so the big hoyas are now in i just showered them off really really thoroughly bunch of freaking critters have been coming out of these i should have flooded them outside before i brought them in lesson alarmed i was catching stink bugs i was catching spiders it was quite the um i've had quite the evening shall i say i went to bring in my lovely trailing jade if you can see it right there sitting on top of the table and I was looking at the leaves and I was like, okay, why do the leaves have markings that look like thrip damage? Like thrips don't normally tend to go for succulent plants. Um, so I was like, is that really what it could be? So I picked up some vines and I was looking at them and sure enough, there's literally thrips crawling on that plant and there's a bunch of thrip damage. So not happy about that. Not super happy about that. Brought it back outside. I've showered it off. Um, I've sprayed it down with my Dr. Doom and... I'm just gonna leave it out there for a little while. I think it can tolerate being outside um, for a little bit longer. So I'm just going to treat it out there. I considered getting rid of it, but I really just, ugh, I've been growing that plant out for so long and it's just, yeah, I don't want to get rid of it if I don't have to. Um, however, I did end up tossing my Syngonium milk confetti tonight, which really sucks because I've been trying to treat that for like a couple of months now, but it was still just covered in thrips. And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore because that was the original culprit. Anyways, I've basically just had a night of spraying down plants, treating plants. All of the tropicals are inside. I have a little isolation area right here um, for these guys. 
And then outside, I still have my cactus and succulents because it's dark now, if you can't tell. Oh, it actually looks really bright on the camera. It's not that bright out though, like it's dark. If I look out on my deck and I wanna be able to like look them over in the daytime because now I'm worried about my other succulents bringing in thrips or something. So I wanna be able to look at them tomorrow and kind of decide where I'm gonna put them and everything. Um, so yeah, when is daytime? Again, I will be doing that. I think I'm signing off for plant chores tonight. It's only 7.06 p.m. So it's not super late or anything. Um, I'm gonna edit a video now and just try to enjoy the rest of my evening. That was like kind of stressful, not gonna lie. I really don't think I'm gonna put plants out next year or if I do, I'm just gonna put like maybe a couple of those big Hoya again because they did really well. Like I think it was worth it, but the stress of bringing in all these plants with pests and trying to treat them all at once and trying to like find spots for them all at once without like spreading pests and stuff. It's just, it's kind of stressful, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for tonight. And I don't even know if I'm gonna be doing any plant care tomorrow to be honest with you. But if I do, you will see me. Oh yeah, the cactus, I should probably do those tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're doing a little impromptu plant mail unboxing on this fine Friday afternoon. I was just in the middle of going to bring my cactus downstairs and um, somebody was at the door with a package. And I know that there's a plant in here. So I'm so excited to open this. This is actually sent to me by someone who's become a plant friend through my Patreon slash Discord. Um, and she actually just lives over in Vancouver. So not too, too far from me. And she had an extra of one of my wishlist plants and she offered it to me and sent it over. And I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. I've really been wanting this plant lately. Um, and yeah, it's one that I'm kind of nervous to grow because I've heard mixed thoughts about it and like mixed experiences. But um, yeah, let's just, let's just crack into here. Also, I love that it's an upcycled Plant Haven Toronto box. She's got good taste. She's got good taste. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll cover what the plant is so that I can surprise you guys, but it's packaged so nice. Oh, and she sent me some cute little extras in here. She told me she was putting in some extras. It's a cute little sticker and it looks like some crystals. Oh my goodness. Oh, this one is so pretty. This pink one. That's so cute. 
Oh my gosh, it's so sunny right now. I like tried to pull the table back from the sun so that you could actually see me while I was filming. What is this? This is so cute. I'm definitely gonna be hanging that in the window. That is so pretty. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. This is my first time seeing this plant in person as well. It's always kind of like, I don't know, special seeing a wishlist plant. Cause sometimes you see them in stores and you don't buy them and blah, blah, blah. But this one I've never seen before in person. So how cute. Okay, are you ready? Oh, 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 I got some fluff getting caught. Oh my goodness. Look at this little baby. It is so cute. I can't see if the camera's focusing because I'm so far away. There we go. Oh my goodness. This is so, so pretty. So this is Philodendron Pariso Verde, which um, I have been eyeing a lot recently. I've really been wanting to add a couple more variegated philodendron into my collection because I feel like I don't really have any, um, or not any, I do have a couple, but I don't have many variegated philodendron. I've just seen these popping up lately and I actually was watching a YouTube video that really convinced me that I needed this plant because hers was just so, so stunning. I can't remember the channel name, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, yeah, just like such a phenomenal plant and I watched that and I was like, okay, I need this plant. The reason that people have trouble growing this sometimes, or maybe not so much growing it, but getting variegation on these, um, is because apparently the variegation is, um, like heat dependent. The higher the temperatures, the better the variegation will be. So I'm getting this as we're going into... Well, we're in fall we're gonna be going into winter so obviously not like a warm time of the year um so i don't know what i don't know i'm gonna have to put some thought into growing this over the winter but in the summer um i mean hopefully next year we'll have air conditioning in here because this past summer was so freaking hot like this guy would have been living his best life in here but um yeah i'm just really curious of what my experience is going to be with this plant let me know if you have one but um yeah oh my goodness i'm just i'm so excited to have this so that was so so nice for to send it over oh i have to go message her and say thank you right now i feel so lucky to have met just the most lovely people in this community all right we are heading down for his winter's rest I'm scared of poking myself in the eye. That's literally something that I would do. Anyways, gonna go down to the basement. I already put the monkey tail and the rat tail cactus down there. So see you in a second. Okay, so I have them here. This is a bunch of camping stuff, so don't mind that. I don't know whether I should put them, like I don't want them getting scorched right in the light. Maybe I should move this over some more. I get creeped out being down here because, um, there's spiders down here, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be keeping them here, I guess. I don't know, does anyone have any suggestions? Should I put them like in no light? Like should I put them down on the floor or something? Um, not completely sure, but um, yeah, they're gonna be here for now. Humidity down here is 38%, so it's a lot drier than upstairs. So hopefully they will enjoy that. I guess I'll find out. It's Friday evening and I'm just updating to say that I haven't done anything else plant-wise except for move some plants around for a video that I'm filming for Patreon. And I did take the big Hoyas out of the bathtub and I hung them up. There are actually plants that I should water, but I'm pretty tired and I kind of just want to get ready for bed. So I think I'm not gonna do it. And tomorrow is supposed to be watering day, but I forgot that I'm out of town tomorrow. So I don't know how much watering I'm gonna get done. Um, and I'm gonna have to do the moss poles in the morning. Oh man, I should do some watering tonight. I truly should. Stay tuned to see if I gather the strength to water some plants. 
Good morning, everybody. I'm just having my morning coffee and I'm gonna go around and just walk through the plants, check on them, um, top up any moss pulls that need to be done, propagations, that type of thing, like we did a couple of days ago. I like to try to um, top up the poles every second day. So yeah, that's kind of my routine that I was doing before and then I fell off of it because summer was so busy, but now I'm back into it. So um, yeah, it's a nice day. It's a nice way to start the day as well. And I get to see any new leaves that are coming out and just kind of check on everyone. Also, I'm gonna try to do some watering um, before I have to get ready to leave today. So I'm gonna do that after I go around and do my check as well. I was just topping up the pole on my philodendron narrow and look at this he's in bloom oh my gosh he's put out inflows before but they've never actually opened before so this is the first time that it's completely opened it's so crazy like this plant is on another level it's constantly growing even with my underwatering, and not only is it growing, but it's also blooming. Like it literally just unfurled this new leaf this week, and it's blooming. So, yeah, so crazy. Hello everybody, I'm back. It is now Sunday and I'm going to be taking the Wally Grows out of the tub because I let them drip in there overnight and I still haven't put them back in their spot. So I'm going to go do that right now. And then I think that I'm also going to be repotting a couple of my Anthurium today that really need it. Um, so yeah, that's my plan so far, but I am going to be spending this next little while just... I figured I would get a couple of plant things done before I start cooking a meal. So I kind of have this little pocket of time, um, right now. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I just brought the rest of my succulents in. So now every single plant has been brought in from outside, which is amazing. Um, but I have treated all of these for thrips just because, well, this one had thrips slash possibly still has, but I think it's pretty safe right now. 
I don't see anything on it and I've treated it. So I'm just going to probably hang that away from the others and continue to treat it. Um, and these other ones, I don't think that they have anything, but I'm just going to quickly look them over and give them a spray down and everything before I find a home for them. Okay, so I gave all the succulents a really good spray. They all look good except for, unfortunately, my white ghost euphorbia. I don't know what that is. Is that fungal or is that like cold damage because it's been outside up until now? I honestly don't know, but I hope that's not going to be something that spreads because I love this plant. Like, why did that have to happen to this particular one? That's the only spot, but um, yeah, I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it. Leave me a comment if you have any insight on that. But yeah, I'm just going to let these probably drip in here. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe overnight. I don't know if I'll get to putting them away tonight because I'm going to go repot those anthurium right now. I've really been wanting to pot up my Lux Hybrid anthurium because I recently moved them out of the cabinet. They're now living on my plant shelf and um, they're in these tiny pots. Like they're so root bound and I can tell that it's really starting to wear on them, especially one of them. Um, and I just know that those tiny pots in combination with living outside of the cabinet is just not gonna work. So um, I have them here. We're all set up to do a quick little repot for them. Why does everything look so blue? First of all, look at how massive these guys have grown. <laughs> like they're huge now. So they definitely had to come out of my cabinet, which is why they're living on the plant shelf now because they're just growing up way too close to the grow light. You can tell this one was getting, I'll show it to you once we are working with it, but it was getting a little bit um, bleached on the newest leaf. So yeah, I took them out. But like I said, they really, really need to be repotted, both of them. Um, so I'm just gonna get set up for that. We're gonna have a fun little repotting moment. It's kind of like evening time now. It's 5.30 p.m. so it's kind of a nice relaxing activity before I make dinner and um, do whatever I'm gonna do this evening, which is probably gonna be editing. It's like golden hour, the sun is starting to set. I have my cozy cup of, I think this is cinnamon, cinnamon lavender or something, I don't know. Cinnamon stress soother tea. I also have my Rousseau pot extenders here, which I have never even used before. I don't even know which way they go. I think like this. I think that I'm actually going to be able to use these for the first time, which I've been dying to use these. They're just so innovative. And I've been using a Starbucks cup as a little DIY pot extender, which works fine for a small plant. Um, like you can see there's tons of roots in there. So that, oh, this one isn't even a Starbucks cup. This is just like a upcycled cup from North Shore Tropicals. I'm definitely gonna need something bigger than a cup now, which is why I got the pot extenders. So I have two sizes of pots because I wasn't sure what I was gonna end up going with. They're kind of similar in size, actually. The style's a little bit different. This one's bigger, but not by much. This one's very unstable, so I'm nervous to put it down. Okay, do not fall, please, do not fall. Um, so I wanted to make sure that the pot extender was going to work with whichever one I choose because I think that you're supposed to have a six inch pot for these. I'm not sure. Okay. It looks like it would like just barely work for this one. Like I could probably get away with it, but it would be better with this one. Hmm. I don't know if they're quite ready for this big of a pot though. I think that this would be better for them. I really do. 
think I'm gonna go with a smaller pot. Um, I brought them both up just to kind of see, but I'm gonna go with a smaller pot and just hope that I can use the pot extender <laughs> with this. I'm also gonna be going with just my DIY potting mix because I'm fresh out of my Molly's Aeroid mix and I haven't um, ordered more yet. It's on my list, but I think I'm gonna use this for a little while and then I'm gonna order more. This is just potting soil, orchid bark, and a chunky perlite. So I think it'll be fine. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna start filling up the first pot. Okay, I'm gonna do this guy first. This one is the Magnificum Luxuriance Hybrid and this is a new leaf on him. It's still kind of soft, but oh my gosh, it is beautiful. It's like perfect. I finally am getting nice leaves on this one. So I have been loving this guy lately. Like honestly, kind of more than the um, Crystal Meg Luxuriance. That other one was the one I preferred for a while, but this one has just been like, I don't know, hardier lately, I guess. Like it hasn't really been acting up and that one has been acting up a little bit. Anyways, let's take him out of here and see what we're working with for roots. I mean, I can already see that it's like completely full of roots, so it's not gonna be much of a surprise since it's a clear pot, but um, we'll get a better look. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think some of them were stuck in there. It's fine. Okay, oh my goodness. Yeah, tons of roots. These things are drying out like crazy, but I can see why. Because it's like completely roots in there. So if I pop that in there, that's actually gonna be pretty perfect. I don't know if I should take off the Starbucks cup first. Maybe I'll fill it up with potting mix and then I'll take that off and deal with the top part and the extender. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, these guys are gonna be happy because they were like getting bone, bone dry, like really being underwater just because I could not keep up with those tiny pots. These should have been repotted so long ago. I'm just behind and I'm, I'm in, um, I'm in catch up mode right now. Like just trying to, trying to get my life together, trying to get my plants together. <laughs> I'm in catch up mode in various different aspects <laughs> of life right now. I'm just trying to um, be on top of things. So that's why I am getting things done now. Tomorrow I think that I'm going to extend some moss poles because that was another thing that I wanted to prioritize during this like week. Of plant chores so tomorrow we're going to wake up and water our moss bowls because we didn't do it today so we have to do it tomorrow kind of repetitive but this video is just supposed to like reflect my regular things that i do um so we're gonna do that again and then i think i'm not sure if i'll have any watering i mean i guess when i'm going around and doing the moss poles, i can kind of check and see if anyone's due for watering or if they can hold out until Wednesday because Wednesday is supposed to be my watering day. But obviously if anyone is like suffering, then I want to water them before that. But I don't think that I really have a lot to do tomorrow plant-wise. Like it's not a big watering day or anything. So that's why I'm thinking I can get a couple of moss poles done. It's actually a holiday tomorrow. It's Thanksgiving here in Canada, but um, I'm just gonna be like filming and working tomorrow filming and editing probably and doing some plant things with you guys okay this is already so much better because it's sturdy which is nice um now i'm going to try to remove this cup it's just taped together here so i'm just gonna undo that And then I guess I'm going to need to look at the instructions for the pot extender thing. Okay, let's get this off. 
Let's free him from the shackles. Okay. Okay, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's crazy how the roots were all in there as well. You can see, oh my goodness. Okay, so I actually need to look at the instructions for these. Oh, okay, peel the film. Let's open these first, because they're twist tied together. Fold the connecting tabs A, okay. These, fold them 90 degrees. Okay, okay, folding them. Wrap the pot extender. Oh. Wrap the pot extender around the base of the plant and insert the connector B into the slot. Okay, so they're just going to go like that. Oh, and then you can stake them down. Okay, okay, oops, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this, you guys. Put it around. And then I'm just doing up the buckle on the back. It works with this size pot. Perfect. Okay. That's actually, I thought I would have to stack two of them because you can stack these, which is really cool. It like goes into these little slots. Um, but I think I only need, well, I guess I could do two and just like be prepared because it is like, does have roots all the way up there. Hmm, maybe I will stack two. I'm going to use my little greening pins to stake down through those little tabs that I folded just to stabilize this. One right here, I think. Okay, that actually works surprisingly well. <laughs> Wasn't expecting them to provide that much stability. Okay, so now I just slot these through. Actually, maybe I'll do it so it's gonna line up the same. So I'll do, is that right? I want to do this one right here. And the little grooves in this are for the petioles so that they can fit through. Oh my gosh. It's so cool. Wow. Okay, so now, oh shoot, why'd I do that? Why do I do these things? <laughs> I put the front buckles like, or the back buckles like right at the front of the plant. Why do I do these things? That's gonna bug me. I have to switch it. Ugh. I can just remove the stakes and rotate, I guess. You live and you learn, I guess. I'll remember to pay attention for next time. Wait, so, oops. I'm gonna this way, there. Okay, 
buckle is now in the back. <laughs> so I'm just gonna restake it down. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're ready to fill. I am just going to top this up with the exact same mix. And it's just literally going to extend the pot for this plant to continue to grow and continue to root into. Okay, I just finished up doing the second one. This is the um, Crystal Meg Luxurians. And like I said, it just hasn't been doing quite as well as the Magnificum Luxurians. Um, but I'm hoping that it will start doing a little bit better, especially with this rebot. It does look like it's gonna be pushing out a new leaf soon, so I'm excited about that. So I repotted this off camera just to save time and because I'm losing light, but I essentially did the exact same thing except for I only used one um, pot extender because I don't think it quite needed to. But again, the roots looked really healthy and yeah, I'm super happy with how this came out. And this is the final result of the other one. I actually put a cute little cover pot on it. And when I was clearing things off of the table and cleaning up, I was carrying a bunch of pots and then they all just like slipped out of my hands and made a big mess on the floor and broke the cover pot that this was in before, the smaller one, which is one that is so cute. I really like it, but now it's broken. So I think I'm gonna have to try to glue it together. I feel like I'm always just like, I've been gluing a lot of pots together lately, um, but yeah, so that's kind of annoying. But um, anyways, Super, super happy with how both of these Anthurium turned out. I'm gonna give them a water through and then I'm just gonna put them back on the shelf. And yeah, we'll kind of see over the next few weeks how they root up and how they're doing, hopefully well. But yeah, that's gonna be it. But yeah, that's gonna be it for... But yeah, that's gonna be it for my plant chores tonight and I will see you guys tomorrow.
You getting this? Day in the life is me walking through all the soil. <laughs> so you saw me this morning go around and check on all of the moss poles and I didn't do the ones hanging on the wall because I knew that I wanted to bring them down tonight and water them and extend one of them. And that is going to be my Amedrium medium. It's so beautiful. Wow, I love this plant so freaking much. It's just, it's always grown so well for me. And um, yeah, it's just so unique and gorgeous. I'm always just admiring this plant. Uh, it's currently on my Rousseau moss pole tower thing, um, this like whole system. And I have it hanging on the wall, as you saw, which I love. I did that a few weeks ago and I've just been obsessed. I can easily get it off of here, so I'm just going to unstrap it. Boom. Um, I'm actually probably going to swap out another plant to go on the wall because this one is going to be too tall for that spot, I'm thinking, once I do the extension. And that's kind of the plan for hanging my climbing plants on the wall. I'm just gonna swap them out and it's so easy to because they're not like permanently attached to here or anything. You just strap them in. So once plants outgrow that space, I'll just move them down and then I'll pick a new plant to go up there. So it's just gonna be kind of like a rotating plant display, which I think is quite fun. So yeah, this guy is grown way past the pole. I should have done this a while ago because this is a plant that will punish me for not extending in time and I'm probably gonna have to trim at least one of these vines because it's just gonna turn into a runner um, and that's the problem with these plants and that's what can be difficult about growing them. If you don't provide enough light and you don't provide um, a moss pole for it to grow up or like, I don't know, I've only done a moss pole but maybe just any type of support, I'm not sure. Um, if anybody grows these climbing on something other than a moss pole, leave a comment for us. But, um, but in my experience, I've always done a moss pole and I find that that is really necessary for this plant. Anyways, I'm rambling on and on. And there's a load of laundry going right now. So sorry if you can hear that. Okay, so I have the extension right here. It is on a Rousseau moss pole. So I'm just gonna fold this and fill it with moss. When I went around this morning and touched up the moss poles, I also kind of did like the emergency water I was talking about with some of my plants because I'm really busy the next couple of days and I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of time to thoroughly water the plants that are thirsty. So any plants that I thought are gonna be thirsty before Wednesday, which is my next like full watering day, um, I just gave them some water with the squeeze bottle. So um, yeah, that was kind of part of my plant, like going around and checking on the plants this morning. Ooh, it's really raining out. I didn't know if I was allowed to talk or not. It's really raining. Yeah, you can tell. And it's interesting. I never noticed how like the window here doesn't get wet because of the heat. Yeah, it. yeah. But this one gets like. <coughs> yeah, that's why it's brighter here. So I'm setting aside, thank you. I'm setting aside these little pockets of time that I have in the mornings or in the evenings to um, kind of catch up on things that I that really need to be done. Like I have some moss holes that really need to be extended. Like they're way overdue, <laughs> like this one. So that's why I'm just quickly, you know, doing a little moss pole extension moment tonight before I start some editing video for edit some video editing for tonight. It's been a crazy few days, you guys. It's just been busy, busy, busy. I really hope this plant isn't gonna hate me because I didn't extend it in time. Okay, gonna try to buckle it up now. Oh, I guess I need, I'm gonna need to fill the bottom part too. Or maybe I'll fill I think I'm going to fill this top part because I leave some space or maybe I won't. I I'm going to fill the bottom on here. I think that's what I normally do. I 
feel like I haven't done an extension in a while. I mean, clearly I haven't because my plants are looking crazy. My climbing plants. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this up now. I think it's best to do the buckle in the middle and then kind of work outward from there. Or I do one in the middle and then I do the top and the bottom and then I do the other ones. But the middle kind of helps to hold things together or else it just goes crazy on you. There we go. with the buckles up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Ready? So I'm gonna squeeze this in a little bit. And slide it in the inside of the original moss pole on here. Like that. Ooh, that one went really well. Okay, maybe I'll bring you guys over here so that you can see what I'm looking at. Actually, I think it's easier for me to come over here. So, um, what my plan is here, um, there's this longer vine, which I think is just going to run. So I think, oh, should I chop it up or should I just maybe tuck it in? Okay. I might just tuck it in, into the buckles. I guess I'm just going to try that. I'm going to tuck all of these into the buckles and hopefully they'll just root and push out leaves for me. But if it doesn't and this continues to run, then I'm going to have to chop it off. But we'll try this first. Fingers crossed that they'll be happy. So I'm just going to undo a couple of the lower buckles here. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to see when there's so many leaves. Okay, I was fiddling with that for quite a few minutes and then my battery died, but I've got her all strapped in. You can see that log one right there. Um, but yeah, hopefully these vines just continue to push out leaves because look at her. Oh my goodness. Love her so much. Really glad that I finally extended this. I'm gonna be watering her. Um, not right now, cause I'm gonna finish the extensions I wanna do, but I'm gonna put her over by the sink because I'm gonna be watering her tonight and um, just wetting the moss just a little bit more. It's already kind of damp, but I just want to do it a little bit more. And then um, I guess I have to find a new spot for her as well and figure out what plant I'm gonna be putting on here next. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna be tackling, this is, this is frightful, you guys, how overgrown this one is. This is my beautiful Epipremnum no ID looks like a Cebu Blue, very similar. And it's growing beautifully on this pole. It's sizing up, it's fenestrating, it's just immaculate. However, it has grown over the pole. It grows so fast, I like can't keep up with extending. And oh my gosh, I'm spilling the potting mix, but I don't know if you can see, let me show you this way, how far over the pole it's grown. There's one, two, three, four leaves. Um, growing over the pole. So I am going to be adding an extension and look at the roots. Like, look at that bad boy hanging out of there. Are you kidding me? It looks kind of creepy, honestly. Um, so uh, this one is on a thickly pole. So I have, this is the newest type of thickly where it closes from the front. And I think I'm gonna go with this for the top because I might end up chopping it and this is gonna be easier to get the plant out. Um, so that's my plan. Set it over here while I get the pole set up. And I'm thinking, 
The other ones that are overgrown, or at least some of the other ones that are overgrown on their poles right now, I'm thinking I wanna air layer them. So I might end up doing that. I don't know, I don't have a lot of time tonight. I might, I might just quickly do it after this. I'm just gonna try to be quick, make this, and then perhaps create a couple of little air layering balls and put them on some of my other overgrown plants. So I'm gonna fold this up. the extension here. Hopefully it goes smoothly. So I stick them again on the inside. So I kind of squeeze it together to make it able to slot in there better. Oh, nice. I feel like sometimes it goes really well and sometimes it just doesn't, but oh, one little, there we go. It looks kind of janky here. I want to like pull it outwards more. There we go. Is it gonna stay? Yes, nice. Okay, there is a root going in there so I don't want to disturb that one too much. But the extension is on there. The plant, onto oh my gosh, it's literally gonna be at the top almost again. <laughs> Send help. Too many balls. Okay, I'm just gonna open the straps up to get it in there then. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's now completely strapped in and it looks a little weird because the other vines haven't caught up to the top yet. There's just like one primary vine that's really taking off with these big leaves, which you can see I strapped in there. And then there's other vines, like smaller ones down here that are going to catch up, but they're still, they're still lagging behind. I think there's a few different ones in here. I don't know where the other one, is there only two? No way, there's three. I see three, I think, yeah, okay, this is the newest leaf on the other one, right there. There's three vines in here, but one is like the main one. This is also sitting a little bit crooked because of all the roots that are coming out the bottom, but it sits in that cover pot. So um, I'm kind of able to maneuver it in there so that it doesn't look super crooked. Anyways, thank goodness that this one is on a pole again. I'm literally gonna have to stick another one on there like in a couple of weeks probably. Okay, so I've got the poles back up there. I ended up putting the ring of fire in place of the amedrium, and I think I'm just gonna put the amedrium down in front of here for now. I don't really know where to put it, um, but I need to wrap things up tonight because I haven't had dinner yet and it's getting late. I'm really hungry. Um, I did decide to do some propagation stuff though. I put a couple of my propagation orbs on the gigas. I need to cut off the little tabs, but um, hopefully, those will root up and I'll be able to chop it because as you can see, it's literally growing way over. I'm actually kind of impressed at how well it's growing even though it's so far over the pole. And then I actually cut back 
my philodendron, oh, you can't see it. My philodendron burrow marks fantasy. I just took a couple of cuttings and I'm just gonna water propagate them. I just can't be bothered to air layer. To be honest with you, so the cuttings are right here. I'm gonna pop those guys into water real quick. And then I just did, <laughs> I have a lot of air layering going on on this one. This one has been on here for like a week or two. I don't really see much happening, but it's just moss and like a little pot. And then I did the plastic wrap method for this node and also for this node. So hopefully I'll be able to get a few cuttings, like, oh my goodness like nicely rooted cuttings from this plant and i also just watered it while it's here it's actually really really gorgeous anyways i'm gonna eat and then i just realized that those succulents that i brought in yesterday are still in the tub so i'm gonna need to take those out and put them on the plant shelf before i go to bed but i think that that's going to be it for the plant stuff that i need to get done this evening a little bit of chaotic vibes since I've been like bringing in the plants and everything this week. Just a constant flow of plants in and out of that bathtub. Hello everybody, it is currently Tuesday evening and I'm hopping on here to wrap this video up. <clears throat> I have not done any plant care today except for rearrange some plants because I'm working on a Patreon video where I'm doing that and in that video I also took some propagations and things like that but as for actual like watering maintenance I have not done anything today and I'm not going to be doing anything because I just it's a really busy day for me it's actually a really busy week for me this like week new week that I'm going into we're finishing up the week of plant care but we're at we're on Tuesday so it's near the beginning of a new week for me you know what I mean but yeah, oh my goodness, I have already edited most of this video and it's getting pretty darn long. So it's probably for the best that I'm just wrapping it up and not continuing on with more plant care today. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so tomorrow I will be watering. Um, but yeah, so thank you so, so much for joining me. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know if you liked this video. I would love to make another one. Also, thank you so, so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click my link down below in the description box. There you'll find one of their best offers. They're offering the first 500 people who use that link 30 days free plus 40% off of your first year of Skillshare membership. Highly, highly recommend checking them out. I've already saved some more courses that I really want to do and I can't wait to jump into those. Anyways, hope that you are all so, so well. Can't wait to chat with you in the comments and can't wait to see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye.